Hello, everybody. This is Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host, and I would like to welcome you back to another episode of Health and Wellness Tips here on Live Life Well TV. Our special guest is back once again. My goodness, she's becoming a part of the Live Life Well TV family at this point, but it's always a pleasure to welcome Leslie Marchand back and Today, we have an incredible topic that she's going to highlight for you, so you will want to stay tuned. And we are back. And at this point, it is my pleasure to welcome back Ms. Leslie Marchand. She is a licensed clinical social worker with Silverado Hospice. The topic that Leslie is going to address with us today is disruption as a gateway to growth. Leslie, welcome back. Thank you so much, Robert. It's wonderful to see you. It is wonderful to see you. I really enjoy having you as a guest on this show. Uh, so many of uh, the, the points, the very important points, growth tools really, that you've been sharing with us in these episodes are absolutely beneficial. So uh, tell us what we're going to cover today. Well, you already mentioned the topic or the title, disruption as a gateway to growth which is kind of a mouthful, but it's basically just taking uh, hard circumstances in life when life throws a curveball our direction, or we choose to pivot in our life in a way that causes change and how to work with that in a way that helps us grow and become um, healthier, happier, wiser, more kind people. It makes perfect sense to me, and I think this is right on time because really it goes without saying that uh, 2020, uh, unfortunately, has been a major disruption in so many lives in a number of ways. So again, very timely. You're right on time. So where do we begin? Well, it's interesting because we are at the end of 2020 and we have all experienced lots of disruptions. This topic became an interest of mine over the past several years. I did a TEDx talk um, in Sugarland on it in the fall of 2018. And that talk was um, following the 2016 and 2017 uh, flooding events and Hurricane Harvey in the Houston area and how that impacted my family as well as, you know, the community, everybody that I, I work with. Um, and we were all experiencing huge disruptions at that time and just watching how individually and collectively we responded to that in ways that really make a difference and um, make lemonade out of lemons. That's to me what it's all about too. I mean, I, I'd like to find one life on earth that has not experienced some form of disruption at least a number of times and disruptions in different ways, shapes and forms. So to me, managing uh, disruptions is what life is all about. So how do we go about doing that? So the first step, and this is something you and I talk about in our different discussions, is especially when it's an external disruption, it's something that we don't have any control over, whether it be a decision or an action that another person makes towards us or in relationship with us, or it's life circumstances of a pandemic or a flood or any other form of a natural disaster. And so the first step in those circumstances, as well as others, is to make a decision and a commitment to find a way to navigate and work with it in whatever way you can to bring the best circumstances following the disruption. I love that. And, and that's a very important first step because it's a way to lift yourself up and out of the fear, 
out of the negative emotion of it. Because some people, uh, me being one of them, when, when a major disruption occurs, I've got a choice, right? We all have a choice. It can be one or the other. Do we swim in the mud of what just happened to the point where we feel like we're not gonna be able to pull ourselves out of it? Or do we decide, oh yeah, well, this is not good. This is not fun, but what do I need to do to shift a negative into a positive? So step one is huge. What's step two? Right, so step two is to take action whatever is appropriate in the situation. So um, when we're talking about natural disasters, it's to get to safety and check on your family and friends. If it is um, you know, a conflict with a relationship or somebody you know, taking action towards you that's not beneficial, it's deciding what you need to do to um, have a sense of emotional safety and, you know, maybe boundaries or that type of thing. Um, the, to step back a moment, we're talking about external disruption, but I want to make sure that as we go through the conversation, we're also talking about what I would consider to be internal disruption. And that's when we make a decision to change our life in some way that does cause disruption, but it's intentional because we know on the other side of that disruption, we get to where we want to be. So in that circumstance, step one is still making a decision and a commitment to make the best of it. And then that action might be creating the disruption so in my own life, um, and this was part of, you know, my talk that I gave a couple of years ago when we were just starting a process of disruption in my own family to sell our home in the suburbs, our 3000 square foot home and move to our family farm and live in a 400 square foot tiny house. That's a very disruptive experience, uprooting our kids, moving to a town an hour away, downsizing, going through that whole process. So it was, it's literally been a, a year to two year process of taking action that is the actual disruption. So that's step two, it's responding to the external circumstances or taking the action of creating disruption if it's an internal experience. I, I love that because in a very healthy way, you're, you're giving your brain a distraction. In other words, you're lifting yourself up out of maybe negative mind chatter about the disruption, the fear of what will happen because of the disruption. And now you're, you're, you're introducing something positive and your brain probably goes, oh, thank God. So with that said, what's the next step? So the next step, and this is my favorite, is to rest, wait, give it time, and see what happens. And we see this in all areas of life, from life circumstances to how our body works, to how our brain works. So one example that I like to give being in a farming family is one major form of intentional disruption that's similar to a natural disaster is when a farmer or landowner burns their field for the sake of um, getting rid of brush and overgrowth as well as to create nutrients in the soil. So that's a disruption. You're, you're literally burning everything to the ground. So it's creating disruption, it's taking action. And then the next thing is to sit back and wait. And you look at a field of black dust and then you watch for the little bits of green growth that start to come up through the rubble. And it happens naturally. I love that, Get to, to rest, just to be aware, to step back, 
and, and take some time uh, to let those new seeds grow. Uh, right. Is there a next step? You know, it kind of starts the process all over again. It really is those three steps, but it doesn't end there. It's come back around to, you know, what's the next decision or commitment to make, followed by the action, followed by rest again. So another example is in our own body, when we are doing strength building exercises, we make a decision. I want to be stronger. I want to be able to maintain my health at the current level it is or improve it. So I go to the gym and I work out and I lift weights and then I rest. And the science tells us that the recovery time and the rest time between workouts is really important because that's actually when the strengthening happens because the, the um, strengthening exercises, stretching those muscles to the point of tears and the strengthening comes when we rest and allow the muscles to repair themselves and get stronger. And then we go back and work out again. So for me, it is a huge way of explaining in very tangible terms, the importance of rest and taking care of ourselves and not being like the energizer bunny that just never stops because we think that's helping us. And we think, especially in difficult circumstances, that we just have to keep going. And there is all kinds of wonderful benefits to perseverance and grit and you know, moving through challenges. And we need to build in that rest. Very true. So before we close, let's, let's um, do an example of a situation and then have you apply these steps as to how one would work with their particular situation or disruption based on the steps that you just presented. So I'll just pull something out of my hat. Uh, say there's someone who has been given uh, a terrifying health diagnosis by their doctor. So that's a major disruption for them. How would you apply the steps that you just shared to help that person out of the rut that they suddenly feel they are in because of that disruption? I like that example a lot because it is an external circumstance that comes in that we don't have control over and we don't have control over the circumstance itself as well as uh, potentially the outcome. So in that situation, I would say the first thing is to really sit with what you've just learned. Allow yourself to process all of the emotions, which, you know, there may be fear, there may be anger, there may be denial, all of these things that are part of the grief process. And let those things be. And then at the same time, work with, okay, how can I make the best of this? Even whether it's, you know, a, a difficult condition that we can treat, or sometimes, you know, that first notice is that it's something that can't be treated. So whatever the circumstance is, how can I work with this? How can I um, maintain my health as much as possible and make the best of the time and circumstances that I am, am in. And that step can't be skipped because it can, as you have used that phrase of lifting yourself up out of a, a certain mindset or difficult circumstance, it's possible to stay in that place without lifting ourselves up and just kind of maintain in that fear. So the um, step of stopping and making a decision to make the best of it is really important. So that's a long way of saying step one of making that decision. And, and then uh, how would step two apply to this scenario? So step two is taking action. And again, it depends you know, on the specifics 
if it's something that you know you need to make some lifestyle changes to improve and maintain your health at a certain level, if it's following whatever treatment uh, the doctor gives you and getting support systems in place so that you're not alone through the process and thinking through how, how do I want my life to be and taking those actions to make those changes. Sometimes this type of health diagnosis is a wake up call of, you know what, I've always wanted to travel or spend more time in nature and I haven't done it well, maybe it's time now. So it's, it's making a plan for dealing with the actual circumstance of the health condition and following your treatment plan and taking care of yourself and thinking about what else do you want out of life that comes from that internal place of your deepest desires. And then uh, onto the third step, how would you, you apply the third step to this situation? So resting, especially with a health condition is really important to do what the doctor and protocols are for taking care of yourself and to rest in the midst of that and build that into your life if you haven't already pay attention to how the things that you're doing are helping or not and then adjust and that's where that cycle comes back around to another commitment another set of action steps and then resting again so you're constantly tweaking that process of what works for you how much rest do you need and then when do you need to get up and go again and then when you've been going for a while, when do you need to rest? So say you fall out of this three-step process and all of a sudden you find yourself wallowed in negativity and it's just not gonna work and the diagnosis in that example is just too intense for you to even deal with and you find yourself back before even step one, uh, 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 an hour after you heard about the health diagnosis, all of a sudden you're back to that moment in time. Do you just start again and, and be kind and patient with yourself and just step up to the plate of step one again, and then two and then three? Exactly. Every day is a new day, a chance for a new beginning. And when you were asking that question, what came to my mind was um, in um, recovery for you know alcohol or other substances, we talk about somebody relapsing I like to think in terms of just lapsing, you know, we all lapse in our normal daily routines and we just start back over again, whether it's lapsing or relapsing, it's all okay. We just start over again, go back to the beginning, know that it's okay to have a beginner's mind. Yeah, yeah, very well said. Uh, it, when you were saying that, I just thought of a, a Doris Day quote, and I'm not going to quote her directly because I can't remember the exact word she said. But she once said that life is like one of those round bottom Russian dolls to where you, if you get pushed down, you can automatically bounce back up if you allow the process to occur. And that, you know, when you trip and fall, she also said, uh, you just make the decision and it's a choice to get back up and you roll up your sleeves and you just keep going forward no matter what. So this three-step process that you've outlined, when there happens to be the next disruption in life, it, it can be very, very effective to get you back on track. And I think we need to love and care for ourselves enough to want to invest time and energy into a three-step process. Because the worst thing, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that can happen when there is a disruption is that we stay uh, in the negative mud of that. Right. Yes. And when you were talking about falling off track, we can almost think of that as the next disruption. So we start the process all over again. 
And one of the things that I'd love to talk about on this topic is Newton's second law of physics, that for every action, there's an equal, an opposite and equal action. So when we fall down, we get back up. The, the best example of it is a bow and arrow that in order to move forward, there often is that need to pull back in order to gain the strength for the arrow to fly. And to me, that helps me know that those stumble and fall moments and the challenges that come in when life throws a curveball, it's all part of the process. And as you said at the beginning, life is about managing all of that. And it's our perspective as well as our actions. You, you, you've helped me to understand uh, a, a very simple thing that we often tend to make too difficult. And that is that when there is a disruption in our journey, um, it's all about how we choose to react and manage that disruption. And uh, these three steps are a wonderful way of throwing ourselves a, a lifeline when we feel ourselves sinking in quicksand. But I think it's the individual who is experiencing the disruption. They have to almost throw themselves uh, a lifeline, you know? And, and so something just happened to me and I, I just experienced a disruption. So, you know, I can be really down and depressed about it, or I can throw myself a lifeline and care enough about myself to start to pull myself up and out of that quicksand by the lifeline that I've thrown myself and use these three steps to do just that. So this is so important because even after 2020 is done, you know, and, and, and all of these things about life now that may bleed into 2021 uh, as disruptions as well, no matter what happens on the outside of us, I think there are always very effective ways of managing that stuff, those disruptions on the inside of us. And I am so glad, Leslie, that you shared these, these three steps because it, it's the difference between saving yourself choosing to do that or going down with the ship, right? Right, yes. Yeah, yeah. So anything else you want to bring to light concerning this topic before we conclude? Like so many things that we discuss, it is very simple. And yet we have to remind ourselves time and time again because the way that disruption shows up in our life is gonna be different from day to day. So we just need to remind ourselves each time, oh, yes, this is a disruption. How do I want to respond? And then keep moving forward. I'm not a video gamer, but for some reason, when you just said what you did, I had this image of, of life being this video game and, and we're in it. And so like we're standing there with a gun. And, and all of a sudden disruption makes itself known in the upper corner of the screen of the video game. And then the choice is, do we use our gun to just nip that, that disruption in the bud right away before it gets to us? Or do we let it overtake us and then go down with that shit? So these three steps that you shared with us today are, are, are ammunition for us to use when the next disruption makes itself known to us, or maybe uh, one is dealing with a disruption right now and they can use these three steps to get themselves up and out of that mud. So with that said and done, Leslie, thank you so much for sharing this very important self-saving information today on how to best effectively manage life's disruptions in a very simple three-step process. I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Leslie. You're welcome. It's wonderful to see you and hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Yes, and you too. And uh, something tells me you might be our guest on the next episode. So <laughs> we'll look forward. <laughs> I don't know how I knew that, actually. I, I, I must be psychic. <laughs> 
which is not a major disruption, by the way. But anyway, uh, this has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host with the one, the only Leslie Marchand, licensed clinical social worker with Silverado Hospice. Thank you all for tuning in. We will see you on the next episode of Health and Wellness Tips here on Live Life Well TV. Make it a great day, everyone. 